All right, welcome back. And uh, we're, we're back to the health segment for this week. Um, you know, I, I said earlier on in the show, if you started with us, um, that we're going to be talking about a very interesting subject, cocoa. Now, um, I'm, I'm, I know that uh, some of you may not know what cocoa is. Um, so for those who know the English word for it, it's piles. And the medical word is hemorrhoids. So let me... Um, I'm going to introduce my guest to, to us. Uh, we'll speak with him for a minute. And then we'll go and look at some of the messages that you sent to us uh, about what you think cocoa is. Good morning, Dr. Kelvin. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, and you? Fantastic. Good, good. Um, this cocoa, <laughs> let's put it in context. What is cocoa? That's a very, very interesting question because mm. in Ghana, cocoa could mean a, a whole lot of things. Okay. I mean, there's cocoa of the eye, cocoa of the skin. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so <laughs> I, I, well, yeah, I mean, now that you say that, okay, <laughs> let's take a look at what uh, some, some, some videos that we got, what some videos <laughs> that we got um, from, from, from some of our guests. Okay, so we have some videos from some of you out there and uh, some of our, your viewers out there. And uh, let's take a look at what you think Coco is. I think Pals is, is it Emorridge or something like that? Emorridge, which, which locally we call Coco. You see, ideally, what I know is, you get some swelling, something around your, uh, inside your anus, which you get, um, Um, bleeding at times, some blood discharge coming from your anus. And I think it's very, very uncomfortable. Looking at some people suffering from, the, from that, uh, my friend is saying, Oku or hemorrhage. Oku is a disease, and the English name is called spouse. We have types of coco, we have West coco, Anus coco, Ipe coco. And the Ipe coco comes like black, black. And the anus ones, when you are around it, you see blood in your private. And scientists have endorsed that you have many types of herba and medicine that can cure cocoa. Um, what I know about cocoa is something which affects the general body. Sometimes your eye, let you see, you have blood vision and some to it. It generates from your anus when you go into private, like you are bleeding and stuff like that. When I hear about um, cocoa, um, what comes to mind is pals. Um, what we all know uh, pals is, is, you know, we have sometimes the guest sauce, um, I don't know how to put it, but the guest sauce at our, is it our rectum or anus? I don't know. When That's why, that's what I know when I hear cocoa. And we, Normally get sores on our fingers too. I don't know, our parents normally say when you get some infection on your finger, it, like it shows you've got cocoa or something. See, I can't cocoa. If you feel any pain, maybe you feel all the time. When you feel any pain, if 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 you feel any pain, all right. So, <laughs> doctor. <laughs> so, very interesting, yes, you yes. know, um, perceptions about that cocoa. people have I, about what piles is or what cocoa is. So, I, I think cocoa is everybody's go-to for something they don't understand. So, whether it's the, it's the eye, the mm. body, the nail, I mean, it's cocoa. I don't know what it is. So it has to be cocoa. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, one of the ladies says that, uh, you know, it me fi fi yem. You know those kind of things. I mean, um, as it were, to 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 germinate yes. within your stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know where all these things came from, <laughs> but I do remember that um, sit, um, uh, sitting in buses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, on many of my trips between Accra and Kumasi, you would find the people selling cocoa and cocoa <laughs> You know, um, and I think they will literally scare you with any ailment that is possible that I tell you. It, whatever you're experiencing it is as a it's this cocoa it's cocoa it, it has, has to be, to be cocoa. cocoa because i'm selling cocoa 
you know, and this medicine I'm selling <laughs> is your deliverance for today. From you know, Coco. And so <laughs> from Coco, you know. So I think um, let's let's debunk, you know, the some of the myths, and then um, let's really understand what we're talking about. All right. So first of all. Um, when we say cocoa, well, at least medically, when we, you say cocoa and you're referring to the one that's around the anus, we are looking at piles or hemorrhoids. So the medical term is hemorrhoids. Um, but now it's all accepted, piles, hemorrhoids, we, we all accept it. And, and basically, it's, it's, um, it's a protrusion of the rectal um, tissue. It's not just one tissue, it's a combination. So it has mucosa. Mucosa is the lining of the, of the rectum. It has blood vessels in there and mostly it's veins. So it's a protrusion due to um, um, a prolapse of the, of the veins in the rectum. And as the vein is prolapsing, it comes along with the mucosa and the rectal tissue. You know. Now, not all um, hemorrhoids or not all piles are visible. And not all of them are, will come out for you to see. Some of them will stay inside um, the rectum. So yes, mm. um, it basically affects the rectal um, and okay. mucosa, rectal so tissue. What we're looking at here. Exactly. So there are two broad types of, of, of hemorrhoids. We have the internal hemorrhoids and the external hemorrhoids, okay. as, as is shown over there. Okay. So the external ones are the ones that you can see easily okay. because it has protruded or prolapsed outside of mm. the anus. Mm. And so you can see it without any much difficulty. If, if, if you just put a mirror um, um, down there, mm. you can actually see a, a hemorrhoid. That's if you have it. Okay. Um, but most hemorrhoids are actually not visible. You can't see it with your eye because it's inside, it's I internal. See. I see. And so that's the thing. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and let me just say yeah. that it's, there's no relation between this, this cuckoo and the other cocos, there's no relation at okay. all whatsoever. So there are other cocos. Eh, well, <laughs> <laughs> according to how they are described, you realize that they are trying to talk about something else okay. and they are calling it cocoa because, like I said, anything that they don't understand or yeah. people don't understand, they call it cocoa. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if they have maybe any kind of protrusion from the body of any sort, then they refer they to, refer it to it as cocoa. Cocoa. Okay. Um, but, but they are totally different. Specifically, what we're talking about here is, is piles. piles. Yes. Okay. Now, um, here's my question. What causes piles? So, um, when it comes to the causes of piles, um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, it's <laughs> lifestyle, it, okay. it contributes a lot to, to piles. Now, mm. basically, the abdomen, or the, in, in layman's term, the stomach, mm. the region of the, of the body here, yeah. um, the, when, whenever there's weight gen or pressure generated inside the, the abdomen, the pressure forces things up and down. Okay. And so, and, but most of the time down because you tend to be standing because mm. of gravity. So it pushes a lot of things down. And so some of the things that will cause an increased pressure include constipation. So you go and sit on the loo, you are trying to push out whatever is in there and yeah. it's, it's difficult. So you keep pushing, you're increasing the pressure over mm. there. So you're putting pressure on the rectal walls. Okay. You know, diarrhea, chronic diarrhea mm. also push pressure on the rectal walls because I mean, and if, you have, if you've had terrible diarrhea before, sometimes you go and sit there, nothing mm. is coming, but your body is trying to force something yeah. out. So there's a lot of pressure generated. Okay. And so that's also pressure on the rectal walls okay. again. Pregnancy, you know, because the baby is heavy or mm. as the baby grows, the weight in the abdomen is increasing mm. and that also push pressure at, um, on the rectal walls again. Yeah. People who lift weights, you know, nowadays mm. all the all the young guys and young ladies are all lifting weights. When you do that, you are putting you are, you are increasing the pressure inside of the abdomen. So again, okay. pressure on the rectal walls. Okay. And somebody who has chronic cough, if you cough all the time, all the time, all the time, you are putting pressure because whenever you cough, you realize you, that you, 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 you sort of you increase your abdomen so, exactly. Yeah. And so you are putting pressure on the rectal Tenses. walls again. So okay. all these things um, lead to increased pressure on that rectal wall which eventually will cause the, the veins to dilate and start protrude, um, mm. for prolapsing or, you know, becoming bigger, bulging yeah. out. And okay. so that's basically it, you know. Having said that, um, 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 when I say lifestyle, the kind of food we eat contributes immensely to the development of hemorrhoids. Um, because now we, we, are, we are eating a lot of processed food, a lot of fast foods, very mm. little fiber okay. um, and, 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 and roughage. Yes, mm. that's a more common term. We're very little roughage in, the, in our foods these days. Everything that we're eating is more or less processed. Mm. And because of that, we are, we are, we are getting, um, our, our stools are becoming harder and harder. Okay. Or firmer and firmer. And so mm. when you go sitting on, sit on, sit on the loo to poop, and um, it takes a longer while for the for the poop to actually come out, and okay. so we are getting a lot more people with constipation. Mm. And then, secondly, we are not drinking enough water. Okay. And so that's what's contributing to the hardness of the stool. Mm. And then the final thing is that we are taking our phones into the loo, and so instead of spending what two minutes, five minutes in the loo, people are spending 10, 15, 30 minutes in the loo, and you are sitting <laughs> that whole time. And because you, I, 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 let me let me be a bit graphic. Now you are sitting on the toilet bowl. Mm. 
there's a hole in the toilet bowl and your, 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 your anus is hanging in the air. So there's a lot of pressure. Gravity is acting directly okay. on the anus. So it's okay. now pulling okay. the, in, the, the rectal mucosa mm -hmm. as well. And so we are getting a lot more people developing hemorrhoids these days because of these factors I've already mentioned earlier. And so that's why we are seeing a lot more hemorrhoids, mm. you know. And it, it gets confusing because, like I said, not all hemorrhoids are visible. You cannot see with, with, your, with your eye unless you go looking for it. Mm. And because you, you as a person cannot look for your own hemorrhoids, it becomes even more, even more challenging. Mm. And so um, people have symptoms that they may not even know what is going on. They just know that they have symptoms. And so there are a lot of people, in fact, um, research, uh, not in Ghana, but in America, as many as 50% mm. of the population, the, the entire American population, is known to have symptoms of hemorrhoids by the age of 50. That's huge. Wow. Huge, huge, huge. <clears throat> wow. And, and, and should I say, unfortunately, we are also approaching that level because, mm. like I said, we are eating less, um, and we are eating more processed food, and we are, we are becoming more sedentary, and mm. so all that is contributing, and so we are fast approaching those numbers. And so mm. we have a lot of people who have symptoms of hemorrhoids, and they are not even aware that they have those hemorrhoids. Wow. Yes, it's, 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 it's an see, issue. Now, um, a really friend of mine mentioned some time ago that um, she, in, in the process of, you know, your, uh, what, how do we call it, grooming, cleaning up and all that, um, she uses shaving cream, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes she feels that the shaving cream has, you know, in between the, 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 the thighs, right, in, in shaving, it's gone to, um, excess cream has gone to maybe um, go to the area of the anus, in front of the, you know, on top of the anus, and possibly has co created a situation where she's having piles when she <laughs> shouldn't. Um, because she says, look, I don't have any constipation, mm -hmm. I don't have any diarrhea, um, but I'm experiencing piles. Is this possible? Well, there's, as far as I know, there's no relationship between shaving cream and piles, as far as I know. Okay. So, and so, yes, okay, it's not, it's not, the shaving cream may not necessarily be causing the pile. Mm. However, it is possible that because she used the shaving cream, she became more aware of that area. Okay. And so that's why she probably saw it. Okay. Now, I don't know the person, but uh, being a woman, women are predisposed to, um, what's it called, piles because they, they, are, they tend to get pregnant. Okay. And once you get pregnant, because of the way to develop baby, you are automatically predisposed to having mm. fibroid, uh, what's it called, having a, a hemorrhoid at mm. some point. I know mm. fibroid is coming up because fibroid also causes an increase in, in pressure in the abdomen. Oh. And so if you also have a fibroid, that could be one of the, the signs of something de developing in the, in the abdomen. Okay. You know. And let me, let me, let me, just, let me just say that, um, um, well, we haven't talked about the symptoms here, but let me just jump there. One of the key symptoms of fibroids mm. is bleeding. And so it's possible that this woman may have noticed some bleeding in the... In you the, mean of, of hemorrhoids? Yes, yeah. one, of the, one of the most common symptoms of hemorrhoids is mm. bleeding. And you, no, you usually notice this bleeding when you clean yourself after you have used the, the loo. Okay. After, after number two, I mean, yeah. you're going to poop and then you clean yourself. You notice blood, blood. On, the, on the toilet paper. Yeah. Most people actually ignore it, but that's actually one of the earliest signs of fibro... Uh, mm. Why do I keep saying fibro? <laughs> of hemorrhoids. Of hemorrhoids yeah. <laughs> okay. One of the earliest signs of hemorrhoids. So it's possible that she may have noticed this and ignored it and now the hemorrhoid is now prolapsing that's why okay. she cannot see it okay because when it starts initially you cannot see it all you, you notice is that there's blood on your toilet paper mm. or there's some pain or discomfort it really non-specific okay. stuff you know and okay. so yes those those are the commonest or the bleeding is one of the commonest signs of of, of a hemorrhoid mm. and in fact in men that bleeding is responsible for most anemia in men Oh, really? We know that women already have their monthly cycle, yes. so that is responsible for most anemia in women. But mm -hmm. in men, because we don't have any monthly cycle, most men who are anemic tend to have anemia because of hemorrhoids. I see, but how much blood is, is lost there? It can be a lot. It can be a lot. And, okay. it, and, and also, it, because it's consistent, it, yeah. it, when it starts, it may, it may only come only when you use the, the loo. Mm. But as it develops further, it could now become a, a regular feature. I Sometimes see. you remove your, your underwear and you realize yeah, that there's a, a stain there. Okay. And because it's constant, constantly mm. going on, you actually lose a lot over time. Okay. You know, but most people, like I said, because it's not blood that you see that will make your heart you know, skip a beat, yeah. most people ignore it. And it goes for a long time. So imagine losing a drop of blood every day for, mm. for four years, five years. That's a, a lot. And so you meet the, the man the first time, you check the blood level, anemia, 
most of the time is from is from hemorrhoids. Mm. Of course, there could be other more sinister causes, but hemorrhoids is the cause in most cases. I see. Now, um, talking about um, the symptoms of the symptom of blood, mm -hmm. the, the appearance of blood. What other symptoms are there, um, so that you know if you're walking around and you feel that there's no issue there? What other symptoms can indicate? Okay. So now I mentioned the blood that you find on your toilet paper. That's usually one of the earliest signs. But as it develops, now you can have blood in the stool itself. Mm. So, and, and that blood tends to be bright red. You see it and you know it's blood. Okay. You can have different colors of blood, and there are, are different colors of blood. They all mean differently. But when you're talking about hemorrhoids in particular, we are looking at the bright red kind of blood. Okay. And when you see it, there's no mistaking that this is blood. Mm. When you see that, most of the time, that means you have a hemorrhoid. And okay. so obviously, you need, you need attention. You might also find um, a swelling in the area. And this swelling may be painful or maybe itchy. Mm. And usually when you have the pain um, and the itchiness, it usually means that there's a thrombos thrombosis in there. A, a, a blood clot has formed inside the hemorrhoid. Oh, and wow. that can, when the blood clot forms, it can actually, um, how do I put it, it can cripple you. When I say cripple, I mean you, you, you can't do anything. You lie down the whole day. Not, mm. You cannot even sit. Mm. You can't sit. You can't stand. You are forced to just lie down the whole day. That's how mm. bad it can be. Okay. And so it's important that when you see the earlier signs, you mm. deal with it so that you don't get to that stage so where... you collapse in your Yeah, about. so you can actually see the external hemorrhoid, which is darker. It's, mm. it's, it's thrombosed, and that can be very painful. Now, the, the, it doesn't mean that only the external ones get thrombosed. It can also, the inside, internal ones can be thrombosed as well. Okay. But once you have the thrombosis, it's extremely painful. Mm. I mean, some have said that it, the pain is one of the, 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 the most severe forms of pain they have actually I, gone through. I can testify to that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you cannot do anything. Yeah. You sit, stand, you eat, even yeah. eating becomes a problem. Yeah. That's how serious it yeah. is. So we ignore hemorrhoid, but it can really be something that will, will, mm. will literally, you know, put you down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so, so, so it's very, very important so that we do. So let's talk about how to deal with it once it's come. Okay. And then we'll discuss how to avoid. So, but before we talk about how to do it now, again, because there are so many people who have hemorrhoids, we tend to ignore hemorrhoids. But mm. a hemorrhoid could also be the first indication of something sinister going on higher up. So when I say sinister, I'm talking about cancer. Okay. You know, so it, it could be the first sign that you actually have cancer. So usually, wow. um, yes, so usually how to, coming back to connect to your question, usually when, when we see a patient who has hemorrhoids, we don't just treat the hemorrhoids and, and let you go away, no. Mm. Most of the time, especially depending on the age of the person, the doctors will go further and investigate the area of the, of the, of the, um, the intestine mm. around the inner. You know, so they'll, they'll go into the, the rectum, they'll go into the, the colon to see if everything is fine. You know, and if they, if they do locate something, they'll take a sample and send to the lab because like I said, it could be the first sign that you actually have cancer. Mm. You know. Now to deal, with, to deal with hemorrhoids, people, there are so many people out there selling coquadro and all those things. Yeah. Now, there's really no medication that will cure a hemorrhoid. Okay. Hemorrhoids are not treated by taking medication. Most of the medication, even the conventional medication out there, are not meant to cure the hemorrhoids. Mm -hmm. They are meant to help you manage the symptoms. Now, this is very, very important. So if you have a hemorrhoid and you have pain, they'll give you something to reduce the swelling, to reduce the pain, so that you can, you can move your can bowel function. freely. If you have a hemorrhoid which is, which is say, um, thrombosed, you de that one, you definitely need, need surgery. They may not do the surgery immediately because at, when the thrombosis is acute, mm. the skin is also inflamed. And it's difficult to do surgery when the skin is inflamed, so they have okay. to make sure that the inflammation comes down okay. before. But when you catch the hemorrhoid early, when you catch the hemorrhoid early, let's stage one or stage two, you can have um, behavioral modifications that can help it re um, to resolve. The stage one hemorrhoid, the ones that you don't see at all, mm. would most of the time resolve by itself. Okay. So whether you do inter intervene or not, it will usually go by itself. But if it progresses to stage two, stage three, sometimes when you change your diet, you eat more roughage, more fiber, because your stool becomes softer, and of course you drink a lot more water, because your stool becomes softer, the pressure, is taking away, and then again, the body can deal with okay. it, it can heal itself. Okay. But when it becomes stage three, stage four, or the late stage three going into stage four, the treatments available, options available are mostly surgical. Mm. 
Mm. Now, the surgery can be an open surgery where they are going to cut and, 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 and suture, or they can use other more modern, modern techniques like um, banding, you know, infrared, etc. All those options are available, provided you go to the right um, mm. um, source. And so it's important that you understand that the medication on the market that are, uh, meant to, are meant to um, alleviate the symptoms of hemorrhoids. There's no drug to cure or to uh, remove hemorrhoids. It's not okay. possible. But, um, okay, so what, so you're saying that um, products like Anusol, for example, mm -hmm. or Pilex, mm -hmm. what are they doing? They are, they, are, they are managing the symptoms. The symptoms. Yes. So, so the some, pain, the, the, pain, aging, the swelling, the, the itching. Swelling. So okay. those, those are what, what would they, they would focus on, mm. you know. And so, um, you, and even when you come to um, the, the, the hospital, they will prescribe those for short durations, maximum one week, seven I days. See. I mean, it's because um, within that time, the body would have, uh, the inflammation would have reduced, and then the surgery can be carried out safely. You know, but like I said, most people, most people, because they think it's just a hemorrhoid, they keep it and they go all, all around until it, 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 it thromboses. When it thromboses, mm. like I said, it's extremely painful. We want to avoid that, that stage. stage. Okay. You want to avoid that stage because when it mm. comes to thrombosis, it can also get infected. And you see, the rectum is already, how do I put it? The rectum is already an unhealthy place mm. because you have the, the feces coming out. Yeah. And feces have a lot of bacteria, a lot yeah. of things that the body doesn't want. That's why it's coming it's out. Different. So if there's an, infla there's a, there's an, an infection in a, in a hemorrhoid over there, it can easily be, uh, become septic. And when mm. I say septic, I mean it can actually enter the bloodstream and cause a lot of damage. And so yeah. it's important that we avoid that situation mm. by treating the hem hemorrhoids with all the okay. seriousness it, it, okay. it deserves. So, so um, how do we avoid? You've never had piles before. How do you make sure you don't ever get piles? It will be, it, well, let me, let, me, let me not say never. So... Uh, <laughs> By by our nature, the way we um, um our the fact that we are upright and walking, we are already predisposed to hemorrhoids. Okay. And the fact that we are, like I said, our, our eating habits are also changing, even increases the risk as well. And so, um, by ourselves, the few a few things we can do is that we need to make sure that we are eating a, pro a proper diet, mm. you know, which has roughage or fiber, yeah. so that our stool doesn't get too hard. We try not to stay too long in the loo, you know. So in other words, don't take your phone to the loo so that you can finish your 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 business in. Mm five minutes and be out of there because the longer you stay there the more weight that mm -hmm. is, is occurring at the at the inner region yeah. you know drink a lot of water um as well and um, yes and if you are going to the gym especially since that one is really self self um in, in imposed um wear the protective gear mm -hmm. you know, there, there are belts yeah. that you're supposed to wear and all that all those things are, are aimed yeah. at reducing the pressure in the pelvis okay. you know so if you have to get the, the appropriate gear so that you, you you can prevent these things from happening all right so those of you who have been taking your phones to the loop <laughs> you are warned uh, you're you forewarned uh, so it's up to you well this month is um breast cancer awareness month so we also want to just uh, quickly touch on the subject of breast cancer and uh, of course we have doctor here with us so um Explain to us what breast cancer is basically, and then let's delve a little bit into that. So cancer is, is, is um, abnormal proliferation of cells. The cells just go haywire. Um, normally, as you are sitting down, your, your cells die, they are replaced. Sometimes you don't even notice it, that, but the commonest time, like, I mean, the, the most obvious sign of this is when you look at your palm, sometimes you see that the, the palm is peeling. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. it's a normal process, and it happens all over the body. Now, imagine that um, your palm is, is not peeling anymore, but then the body does not realize that the palm is not peeling and it's producing new cells. Mm. So there's a disconnection between the cell death and new cell pro and production. So now all of them are just doing, doing their own thing. Want, yeah. That's what cancer basically is. Ah. So when your case, when this situation occurs in the breast, then you have breast cancer. Mm. You know, and you know that the breast is very important, both to the, to the women and the men as well. We all love the breast. And so it's very, very important <laughs> yes, that we, we do. We, we <laughs> <laughs> That we protect the breast, but what, what makes breast cancer quite um, how do I how um, quite interesting is that you can actually see your breast. Mm. So why is that, why do we allow cancer to develop? And that's because most of us don't take time to examine the breast, okay. because breast cancer is something that you can actually pick up if you are conscious about your breast, mm. and when you pick it up early enough. There are interventions that, we, that, that can be done that will not require their breast to be cut off. You see, most women assume that once they have breast cancer, their breast will be cut off. And so they, might, they will not even bother checking at all. Mm. Because once I find cancer, it means I'm going to lose my breast. And I don't want to lose my breast, so I'd rather die with my breast. Okay. Now, the important thing is if you're able to examine your breast, 
in the normal state, you know all, all the, um, the quadrants, everything that you need to know about your breast. When there's a slight change, you are the first person who picked that change and reports it. Mm. So that immediately it's identified. It, they, they can just take out that particular thing and everything is fine. Okay. You know? And so it's important that we, we treat our breasts with a lot of respect so that we can all enjoy the full benefits of the breast. <laughs> <laughs> it's important that we treat our breasts yes, yes, with yes, a lot yes. of respect. And when I say our, I mean both men and women because okay. men also get breast cancer. Okay. And in men, it's actually um, more deadly than in women. How so? Yeah, because for, for starters, the, the male breast is very small. Mm. And so if there's a, a, a breast cancer in there, it, it will spread much easier, much okay. faster. Okay. The female breast is bigger, and so it takes some time to sort of occupy the breast before it starts spreading. Mm. And so if a man mm. gets breast cancer, the likelihood that that man will die from that breast cancer this is much, much, higher. much, much higher than I a see. woman. And I so see. both of our, I mean, both sexes need to be conscious about their breasts. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, what, the basic thing I hear is just it's the physical examination of the breast regularly. Yes. What is it that you can see um, look, maybe looking in a mirror mm -hmm. whilst you're examining, what is it that you can see that can alert you? Is it just any slight changes or there are some specific things that you should look out for? So um, every month, every woman needs to examine her breast. And when you do that, you, you, you stand in front of a mirror. That what you're looking out for, number one, is size. Now, there's always one breast larger than the other breast. Yeah. And so you should know which breast is the larger one. So now if you look in the mirror and suddenly you realize that the other breast is larger than this one, there's a problem there okay, already. Okay, so let, let's go back a little bit. So you're saying that naturally growing up, mm -hmm. you should have noticed yes. that one of your breasts is slightly larger than the other. It should be like that. It should you should like, have it's, noticed it. It's, yes, that, that is normal. So then when you see the other one that's smaller now becoming bigger. Or the bigger one is now extra big. Extra big, okay. Okay, all right. So, so that's the first thing. Alert. Second thing would be color. Is there any obvious color disparity or is there any part of the breast that is showing some color or there's a bulge here or something? Or is the nipple um, retracting? Is it higher than it used to be? Mm. You know, so what can you see with your eye that was not there before? Okay. So that's, what, that's the first thing you're looking for. Okay. So if everything is normal to your eye, then mm. the next step is to touch it. Okay. You actually touch it and feel all, all, every part of the breast. Now, there's a way to do this one, which I don't know if you have time to go through. There's a way to do it so that you don't end up alarming, uh, scaring yourself too much. Because the breast also has tissue inside. There, mm. there are tissue, there are cells in there. So if you don't hold it the right way, you might feel something and get alarmed when it's really nothing. Okay. And so there's a, you, you check all the parts of the breast, make sure that everything is fine. And then at the end of the day, you have to also squeeze the breast to make sure that nothing comes out. Ah. Because if something is coming out, and, and especially if you see blood coming out, that could also be a sign. Okay. Or, if, or if you feel pain, when you're touching it, if you feel pain. And again, when I say pain, we have to be careful because some women, or in fact, or most women will have some tenderness at some point in their, cycle. in their cycle. Yeah. And so um, unusual <clears throat> pain is what <throat> we are talking about, okay. unusual pain. And then also if you find a lump, or even with the pain, if it's not that time of your month and you feel pain, mm. then the, you, you should be concerned, you know. Mm. And so every month you should do, go through this cycle and make sure everything is fine. And then at least once every year, you should go for a formal examination by a doctor. Okay. And when you go beyond the age of 40, you have to start regular mammography. You know, mammography. because your chance of developing cancer increases when you are 40 years and above. Mm. And so you have to now go, we have to go a step higher. It's not okay. just about doctor examining now, it's about machines Actually checking to checking make sure that there's deeper. nothing in there. It's okay. very, very important. All right, okay. Well, we've been talking to Dr. Kelvin Owusu, who is the medical director for um, Optima Care Diagnostics. Thank you very much, doctor, for speaking to us. Thank you. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The City Tube. For exclusive Breakfast Daily content and other City TV programs. Like, comment, and share with your friends.